So schools are reopening. Flu season is approaching. It seems like every day there are still new questions about the coronavirus. This morning, we are tapping into two of our experts to provide some answers. We have NBC News medical correspondent Dr. John Torres and NBC News investigative consumer correspondent Vicki Wynn. Good morning to both of you. Hi, Chanel. Good morning. There's so many questions. Dr. Torres, I'm going to start with you. The United States now leads the world uh, with the highest number of COVID-19 cases. I think it's over 5 million at this point. As we head towards flu season, should we be bracing for what a lot of people are calling a twindemic? And Chanel, you're right. It's over 5 million cases at this point. Unfortunately, over 171,000 deaths as well. And those two tend to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. But as far as the twindemic, what people are talking about is the coronavirus pandemic already being here and possibly worsening come wintertime for a few reasons that I'll go over in a minute. But on top of that, flu will be here as well. And that flu could turn into an epidemic, making it that twindemic has a lot of health experts concerned because if that happens, number one, more people obviously getting sick. But this could also overwhelm our healthcare system. And the reason we think this might be happening is because as the cold weather approaches, we know flu ends up coming into the area as well. And coronavirus might get worse because we go indoors, we tend to sneeze and cough and have runny noses more, which means uh. that we're wiping our nose, we're wiping our, touching our faces and other objects can pass it on that way as well. And so a few things people can do is number one, make sure you get your flu shot. I can't overstress that. Starting, sure. it's usually September, spot shots are there now, but most experts say September, by the end of October, by Halloween, you want to make sure you get that vaccination, and that can protect you at least from the flu. And as far as coronavirus, doing the things we do now, one of the concerns is people will start getting complacent. They'll start not. They'll start forgetting masks, not social distancing, and that could cause it to come back, especially as we start moving indoors. Chanel. Let me squeeze in one more. You mentioned a vaccine. We keep can, we continue to see promising progress on a vaccine for the coronavirus, and some are even in phase three uh, of trials. What can you tell us about the likelihood of a vaccine, and when, in your opinion, might we see one? And Chanel, you're right. By some counts right now, we have over 165 vaccines around the world in production or at least testing process. And eight of those are in phase three, which means they're in that final stage of testing. What most experts are now saying is it looks like the end of the year, beginning of springtime, is when we hope to have an FDA approved one. Now, Russia has released one, but it has not been approved. They have not gone through their phase three trial, which we're very adamant about making sure that happens here because we want it to be safe and we want it to be effective. And then, of course, distribution will become an issue at that point because you can't you can't give all 350 million Americans a vaccine on day one. So right. figuring out that distribution, they're sitting down to do that right now, and hopefully we'll get that under control by the time the vaccine comes out. Chanel. All right, Dr. Torres, as always, good to see you. I'm going to toss the baton over to Dylan. Yeah. Does that work, Dylan? Can you get this? <laughs> well, kind, kind, not really. <laughs> uh, so, Vicky, let's let's dive right in here. I feel like in the beginning we were disinfecting everything, mail, packages, groceries, and as Dr. Torres said. We can't let complacency set in. Do we still need to disinfect absolutely everything? Do we need to be as cautious? Now that we have learned more, the key things that we do need to still be cleaning are our high-touch surfaces that our family members are touching, especially if you have people in your home who are going out to work, going out to school, going out to the store. It's the doorknobs, the light switches, the remote control, definitely the phone, which we touch all the time. But it is good to know, and the CDC has confirmed, that surface transmission is not the primary way that we're going to get coronavirus. It's going to be through coughing or sneezing or talking to someone who is not wearing a mask. So that is the good news. We also went out just a couple weeks ago and did a story where we swabbed a bunch of surfaces out in public that are high touch. And the results were really reassuring. We did not find coronavirus on a lot of these things that you might expect, like an ATM or a door handle, uh, playground surfaces, Ooh. which is helpful to know because the virus is delicate. It doesn't last long in outdoors. Um, but we did find some positives in hot spots like Miami, for example, a restaurant tablecloth, an ATM, a garbage chute handle. Here in New York City, we found positives on a grocery cart handle as well as those self-service bread bins. So the key is you got to wash your hands, train yourself not to touch your face. And what, what about with us spending more time in public? I'm back at work. Yeah. I mean, gyms are going to open up soon. What, what precautions do we have to take besides what we have been doing? Uh, people should be careful, but they don't have to be paranoid. I really think the armor that we have is those three W's. We talk about it. Dr. Torres has talked about it. It's wear a mask, wash your hands, watch your distance. Those are the things that will help us reduce risk as much as possible. And when it comes to gyms, those are open, but even at reduced capacity, you really want to think about ventilation. That is key. Whenever you're in an enclosed space, 
Are there windows? Ask about the filtration system. Are they using a MERV filter? And then, of course, you want to disinfect between users and wear your mask in the gym. Get that workout done as quickly as possible. Not a problem for me. I want to be in and out. <laughs> uh, and then you're good. So I think there are things that we can do. We just we can't be paranoid. We got to get back to living our lives. But we can do it smartly. And these things have to become a habit for us. Right. And like you said yesterday, wearing a mask does not reduce your oxygen levels. So you can exactly. wear it in the gym. Too. Absolutely. And you should. All right. Vicki, thank you so much. Dr. Torres, thank you as well.